In the Foster Baker Lab here at Clark, they investigate evolution. They look at a lot of different things within evolution. A lot of it is the evolution of life history traits in three-spined stickleback. Three-spined stickleback are a species of small fish, and they are model organisms for studying evolution. And this is because we can compare ancestor populations to populations that have migrated into streams, ponds, and lakes. The ancestor populations live in the ocean, and they're heavily armored to protect them from heavy predation. But as these fish migrate up to the streams, lakes, and ponds, they see less predation and changes in environment. These changes in environmental conditions could be nutrient availability or different kinds of predators. And as such, we see specialization in the kind of body types of fish. We also see changes in life history traits like clutch size. Clutch size is the number of eggs a female will lay. And there are two strategies to laying eggs. One, produce a lot of small eggs, or two, produce fewer larger eggs. Natural selection typically will favor one of these strategies depending on the environment. In nutrient poor conditions, it is adaptive to lay larger eggs. That's because you're devoting more energy per egg, and that will increase the likelihood that when the fish hatch, will survive in the nutrient poor conditions. In replete conditions, however, you want to lay more eggs because nutrients are not a limiting factor, so you want to produce as many eggs as possible to increase the likelihood that your genes will be passed on to the next generation. We're going to apply this egg size dynamics to the experiment we're conducting in animal behavior. In animal behavior, we're conducting group research projects. My group is looking at foraging competition between stickleback fry. Fry is the term we use to describe juveniles. Now, here is our thought process in setting up our experiment. In nutrient poor conditions, it is adaptive to be born to a larger egg. Natural selection will select for fish that tend to lay larger eggs. Now, if you're born to a larger egg, you're, you're more likely to grow faster because you have that invested energy at the get-go. Therefore, you're going to be larger faster than all your little friends. So, if you're already in a nutrient poor condition, then food might be limited. We're hoping to show that the bigger the fish, the better you are at competing for food. We're gonna go about this experiment by pitting two fish against each other in a single tank. We're not gonna feed them for a day or two, so they're especially hungry. Essentially what we're gonna do is pipette bloodworms into the tank and see who eats them first. They seem to think bloodworms taste good, but they're pretty vile. In our trial experiments, we see pretty voracious feeding habits between the fish. They're pretty hungry and they really want that single blood worm we're putting into the water. By taking pictures from above the top of the tank, we can tell which fish is bigger. Then in Photoshop, I'll go in and compare and see which fish is longer. By being able to tell which fish is longer, or by really what we're doing is measuring the standard length, we can create a size ratio between the fish. We will then see if there's a correlation between size ratio and the number of worms eaten by each fish. Now I will be sure to let you know how this all plays out.